Hello everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Christian from BM Premiere and today we're going to share our final theories and predictions for the finale of season 2 titled Once Upon a Time question mark. Now as we approach the season 2 finale, it's time to try to connect all the dots and piece together the huge puzzle the creators have done. Each episode has revealed new clues and small pieces of the huge puzzle. As fans, we've been on a roller coaster of emotion, question, and asking ourselves what is real and what is an illusion in this twisted town. This season, the show has introduced new characters as we have seen, as well as the mystery drawings in the caves. But as we approach the season two finale, it's time to connect those dots. We're about to explore the connections and theories that tie everything together from the significance of the music box to the mysteries of the lighthouse and try to make sense of the supernatural nightmares that haunt this town like the show has haunted my life for the past few weeks. The first thing that we're going to go ahead and discuss is the children. One of the most intriguing factors that continue to be explored this season is the role of the children. Tabitha believed that the children hold the key to the town's salvation. Her fate in the children brings an intriguing element to the finale. Tabitha's belief is not without reason. Throughout the series, we have seen glimpses of how the children are connected to the town history. It is clear that the children are somehow intertwined with the supernatural occurrences in the town. But what exactly is the significance of the children? Speculation surrounding their role opens a world of possibilities. Some theories say that the children are the ones who can understand and communicate with the supernatural forces at play. Perhaps their innocence and intuition give them a unique understanding of the town mysteries. Or maybe that the whole show quest is to save the children. Other theorize that the children may hold the power to confront and overcome the fears and nightmares that is in the town. Their pure heart could be the key to unlocking a resolution and bringing about salvation. Dreams have a theme in the show, with each character experiencing their own visions and subconscious struggles. Could the children hold a deeper meaning or even provide important clues for solving the town mysteries? As the season 2 finale approach, all eyes are on the children waiting to see if they will play a crucial role in resolving the supernatural play within the town. Let's move into Elgin's dream and the mysterious melody. In episode 9, Elgin explained the phrase, Here they come for three unless you stop the melody. This cryptic message had left us questioning what it can mean. They touch, they break, they steal. No one here is free. Here they come, they come for three unless you stop the melody. Wondering what it could mean for the fate of the town and its residents. After all, the same melody can he listen on his dream. Now here's what it gets interesting. This is the same melody that Bacta said her grandmother sang to her, meaning this is an old song from the 1940s to 1950s or even more. This is where it gets mind-blowing. We have seen in the show a monster that is a nurse. Back to said, this is a melody for a nurse, a rhythm nurse. But all of this is connected. Could the song hold the key to understanding the nightmares and monsters that live in the town? Is the melody in some way connected to the creation or control of the monsters? It could serve as a summoning call, a catalyst for nightmares, or a means of control. The importance of the melody cannot be overlooked, and hopefully in the season 2 finale we hope to uncover more about the true nature and origin of this melody. Will the characters find a way to stop it, and how it will this revelation impact their struggle for survival? But let's move now into the lighthouse. One element that has captured our attention is the lighthouse, and the dreams associated with it. Let's take a closer look at these dreams and visions, and the objects that appear within them. In the dreams, Tabby finds herself in the lighthouse and it holds the key to possibly unlocking the town's secret. This dream provides glimpses into the mysterious world beyond the town's limit, offering clues and symbolism. One intriguing aspect is the presence of certain objects in the dreams that mirror real-life counterparts. The sound of a phone ringing also holds significance. The particular tone heard in the dream is reminiscent of the phone tone heard by Kenny in episode 8. But it doesn't stop there. But wait! There's more! Tabby sees a sequence of years, this date 1506, 1609, 1864, 1752, 1883, 1931, 
1672, 1978, 1773, and all of them seem random at first. The year 1864 is something that Boy later encounters on a tree. It leaves us questioning the significance of these years and how they fit into the larger story. The dreams surrounding the lighthouse and their connection to real life objects and events leave us with a sense of anticipation. They suggest that this dream holds a deeper meaning to understanding everything behind the town mysteries. Maybe, just maybe, all of these events are what have caused everything that is happening in the town. There's two things that we have seen in the dream world and in real life. The lighthouse and the music box is certainly two important pieces of the puzzle in the show. But let's explore the possibility and connection surrounding the lighthouse. One fascinating theory is that Victor's mother was headed to the lighthouse as we know to save the children, the same children that Tabby has seen. The question, and that is, could this suggest that history is repeating itself? That the town is caught in a vicious cycle with different characters playing out similar roles? Christopher with Jade? Tabby with Victor's mom, Ethan with Victor, and so on and so on. The idea of Victor and Tabby being somehow related, it could be possible that their family histories intertwine in some way, connecting them both to the town's origins. This connects to the infinity symbol in the caves that could hint at the critical nature of events, suggesting a never-ending pattern that links different generations. As we explore these connections, it's essential to consider wider implications. The lighthouse also represents a beacon of hope, a gateway, as the faraway tree, to answer what the characters are desperately seeking. But it also holds the potential danger, as Tabby's dream suggests, as we saw Jim hanging upside down. The infinity symbol, something that is really interesting, could represent the eternal nature. The lighthouse, the dreams, and the infinity symbol could serve as our guide in this journey, guiding us to understanding the town's history and future. Tilly mentions about the number 47, four children, as well as seven grandchildren, which is the same number that we see in the radio. How is this connected? Something as well that we can expect for more answers. So it's theories and prediction, but also what question can the show answer? Before I continue my description from the premiere, don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you for the support. Let's continue. Now, the music box. Let's turn our attention to a key object in the show, the mysterious music box. Throughout the series, the music box has served as a significant and intriguing element in the first episode of season two, leading us to question its true purpose and power. One theory that has emerged is that the music box might not be a mere object or a source of the melody. Instead, it could potentially act as a nightmare catcher in a town filled by terrifying creatures and fear. The idea of a nightmare creature becomes... But what exactly does it mean for the music box to be a nightmare catcher? Well, instead of capturing dreams, it torments the residents of the town. It could be collective and containing the dark, haunting nightmares that torment the residents of the town. Guilt, trauma, pain. It could capture all of that energy, fear, or trauma. Is the only explanation on how we saw Abby. So hopefully the finale answers who created it and what purpose does it serve. Is it a creation of the supernatural being or force that preys on the fears and pain of the characters? Or does it have a more complex and mysterious origin connected to the dark history of the town itself? It connects to how when the music starts, we can see the nightmares like we saw with Abby. Perhaps the melody is a trigger awakening the dormant fears and inviting the nightmare creatures to haunt. They stop when the music started, so it connects. Going back to the cave, there's a few things that I'm going to go ahead and discuss. In the cave, we saw the lighthouse. We also saw the black symbol that Jade sees with the people worshipping or seeing the symbol. We also saw the infinity symbol to the right, as well as the people in boats. So this could mean that this is the town history and how everything is connecting, as well as the big red monster. How all of this is connected, we have to wait and see. Now let's go ahead and discuss the chaos theory. Like the title suggests, even the smallest action can have far-reaching consequences, creating a ripple effect that can disrupt the fabric of reality. One of the key elements that reflect this chaos theory is the presence of nightmares. As we get to see throughout the season, nightmares seem to hold a special significance. The idea that the music box could be a nightmare catcher, connecting how the music box traps everyone in this nightmare. The chaos intensifies further with the introduction of new characters and their stories. Each individual carries their own burdens, scars, and secrets, like we see with Mary. 
In her dream, Boyd was shooting at the monster without doing anything to it. Then in episode 9, we saw the same thing, as well as the music box. So how all of this is connected. Now, one of the last things that I want to go ahead and discuss is how Jim could die. And it's possible going with what is happening in every dream and nightmare where it comes to life. Jim is something that I believe he's going to die. As we know from that dream, we have seen him upside down, maybe being part of the ritual where they can transform normal people into monster. I feel that the monster don't have any blood because they put them upside down. So all the blood, like a ritual, could be in a bowl or something for it. If we consider the town's history, it's possible that some dark force or a group seeking power may have unleashed chaos through rituals. But those are all my questions that I want to be answered in the finale as well as some of my theories about what could happen. We know that Tabitha is going to the lighthouse. We know that Jade wants to discover more. So maybe they're going to go together. We can see that Boy doesn't have the answers. So what's going to happen with that? I'm going to go ahead and do my episode 10 preview on Tuesday. This is going to be today, Monday. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to do my big deep dive where I have so many things that I want to go ahead and, and break down. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Christian from Beyond Premiere. Hope you like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn notifications for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye everyone.